G'day everyone, I uh, thought I'd pop in for another live chat. Uh, let me just adjust this volume. Testing one, two, I think that's okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's all right. Um, been out all day actually at VidCon, um, but I thought I'd pop in and have a chat with you guys um, about the Canon release, uh, which is really interesting actually. So I thought we'd have a chat about that. I'm gonna give it a few minutes though uh, to see how many people pop online. I'm not sure how many we'll get because it's unscheduled obviously, and it's uh, very late uh, in the US, and I think it's, I'm not sure what time is it in, the, in Europe. Um, let me just put my watch on silent so that doesn't go off. Um, so if you actually are here, pop in and say hello in the chat. Vladimir is here as well. G'day, Vladimir. So if you are popping in a little bit later, just skip to where you see the Osler Images logo. I'm going to give this two or three minutes um, before we actually start. Let me just put pre-show on there um, so that we can uh, get a, a number of people in. Um, PV Vlogs say Sweden checking in. Uh, this is interesting at this time because obviously now I'm going to get the Europeans because of the time uh, difference in, in the uh, things. D Darren's also morning day from the UK. G'day Darren, good to see you here. Uh, what time are we here? We're actually 5 o'clock, so it's 5 p.m. here in Australia. Um, Jahan says, hi, what's up? Uh, just going to have a discussion about this Canon camera with you all. Um, it's pretty exciting, so I thought we'd have a chat about it. Um, lovely, I think it is, hi from San Francisco, boy you're up late, um, Mahir's here as well, uh, David Johnson said it's 3am here on the east coast, <laughs> jeez you're keen, um, you're up really early, don't you guys sleep, Sophia says hello from Berlin, Alan says hello, Cody says hi David from New Zealand, g'day Cody, love New Zealand, been there a couple of times, um, David Johnson saying hello to all, Jared is saying hello from Vietnam, um, Mahir is saying Los Angeles, so boy, you're up late as well. Um, Johnny uh, is from Sweden calling. Chris said, what's up? It's 12 in Arizona. Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> I'm up playing Battlefield. Sam says, hello from Southern California. Um, Jihad says, it's one o'clock in Bangladesh. Jerome said, good afternoon, David, watching live from the Philippines. It's amazing how many uh, different <coughs> nationalities we get, and I love that aspect about this. Um, you know, I'm no longer locked into just people in Australia, obviously. I can talk to people all around the world, and, and I adore that uh, side of it. Um, Luke's from Byron Bay. G'day, Luke. Uh, Darren says, working and watching at the same time. Oh, that's cool. Um, I had a great day at VidCon today. It was a really interesting day today. I met a few different people that came up and said hi to me, um, which was good as well. Uh, really enjoyed that and it had some interesting things uh, I learned there as well talking about um, YouTube. Um, but today I'm going to talk about the Canon release. So let's get started on this. I'm just going to crop over to the Osler Images sign just so people can skip to that stage if um, uh, if they don't want to watch this pre-show part. <laughs> and BW Devil said it's 3am here. Don't you? You guys don't sleep. Uh, bear with me for a second guys. G'day everyone, uh, just having a, uh, a Milo actually, you guys overseas wouldn't probably know what Milo is, I'm not sure it's a lovely Aussie drink, I think, I think it's Australian anyway, but I'm just warming myself up, it's quite cool today, I think, what is the temperature, it's actually only um, 11 degrees Celsius, oh, it's freezing, we just hit spring today, so hopefully it'll warm up fairly quickly. Now, I want to talk to you about the new Canon release, because from the specs alone, and I'll talk to you about some things which we don't know yet, but from the specs alone, it seems like Canon have, have put out a really good release. Now remember, things may change when we actually see this announced, uh, but from the look of uh, the specs, which we'll go through in a minute altogether, it seems like it's actually really quite good. Um, and I think the specs sort of say to me that it's probably, it may be better than the Nikon release, and it may be quite easily up there with the A7 III. Uh, so we'll talk about a little bit about that when we sum up at the end. And I'll also open it up to questions so we can go through that as well. Uh, if you do want to get my attention, I don't know whether anyone has done it yet or not. No, they haven't. Uh, put the at David Osler because that will uh, make sure that I um, uh, see it. Hi, Melissa, how are you? Um, 
so I'd, you make sure you do that and that way we won't miss that otherwise you know I might just skip it uh, so do that just to make sure because I'll give plenty of time at the end that we can have a discussion about this as well it's great for obviously the Europeans and also the Aussies because this is a different time zone now uh, we've also got some from the states as well and <laughs> people that never sleep um, so it, at least you guys over there too may obviously get some interaction with me as well because it's a different time zone now um, so someone just said Kenneth love Milo <laughs> That's what I'm drinking. I'm sitting here drinking Milo. I love it. So let's look at this camera anyway. So I'm going to skip over and we'll have a look. So this was announced today on, uh, well, Canon Rumors have said uh, that this has come up. It says, here are the first images and specifications for the Canon e uh, EOS R. Uh, new RF mount lenses. So it's the specifications for the actual camera and also the lenses that are coming out. So let's quickly run through these because uh, it, they're interesting um, specifications. So they're saying it's going to be 30.3 megapixels. So that's really quite unusual. Uh, it seemed to be an average of, of 24 um, megapixels seems to be the, the norm out there. Uh, and then obviously it gets over the 40 odd depending on uh, if you want to go for say something like the a7R 3 or, or uh, cameras like the Nikon uh, D850 but this is coming in at 30 megapixel it's also saying that it's going to have dual pixel uh, CMOS AF well I expected that anyway because the Canon uh, dual pixel is, is really good it's very advanced um, and I think that's a great thing to, to bring over um, they're saying 100% vertical and 88% horizontal AF coverage and they're just saying we think that's what they're going to give on it. This next one though is I don't know what voodoo they're coming out with here and how they're getting uh, the camera to do that but they're saying it's going to actually autofocus at minus 6 EV. Uh, now the best other cameras that are around there at the moment I think are minus 3 or minus 4 um, so minus six is voodoo magic. So Canon, if, if you're going to pull that off, I'd love to know uh, what voodoo you've been spinning because that, that's incredible. And if it is true, um, you Canon shooters are going to absolutely love that. Um, like I said, I think the ones I'm using, which is the A9, the Sony A9 and the Sony A7 III, I think they're minus three. Um, and I can really, if I use a fast lens, I can really sh almost use autofocus in v incredibly dark conditions. So if you're talking about minus six, that's insane. I mean, that is really in, in incredibly dark conditions. So this could be an amazing camera for using it for things like weddings, uh, events, or, you know, like a wedding if you're doing a reception, things like that, where you can get this minus six uh, low light autofocus. Uh, in camera and it probably is related to what f-stop you're using and I'd say it's probably going to be something like the Sony where you have to have a wide uh, aperture lens like 1.8 or you know 1.4 or 1.2 but still that is an amazing feature and, and if Sony have if Canon have pulled that off uh, that is amazing and, and I'm so happy for you Canon shooters if, if that's the case. Uh, let's go keep going down. They've said 4K video now. There's no mention yet what this will be. It's probably going to be 4K 30. Uh, I mean I would love it for you guys to be 4K 60. Um, touch screen LCD um, and that's probably going to be a nice touch screen LCD so I, I think that they would have even, even improved from their other cameras so I'd say the touch screen will work really well. Another great feature too for you guys is they're saying it's going to have an articulating screen. Uh, does that show it on the actual image because I noticed oh yeah it does actually yeah. Uh, we'll look at some images in a minute and we can check that out. So you're going to have a fully articulating screen. It's going to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's going to have dustproof. Uh, it's going to be uh, drip-proof, a magnesium body. It's going to have the same battery basically as all their other cameras out there, like the 5D Mark IV, which should be good because that battery life has been proven to, to be quite good uh, or very good. Uh, but the only thing I suppose we've got to wait and see is how this will work in a mirrorless camera because as you see with the Nikon version of their camera, the Z cameras, it has the same battery as their high-end digital SLRs and the battery life was nowhere near as good. So we're going to have to wait until we see the ratings of how that battery life actually works. Uh, already a battery grip's been announced and hopefully it'll be a full battery grip, not like the Nikon Z1 which is only a battery. Uh, there's no... Um, shutter or anything like that, I don't know, no controls, which is just crazy. 
Uh, the size there, which is 136 by 98, uh, 580 grams. Um, the inner mount is 54 millimeter uh, flange, uh, and it's a 12 pin. And lastly, the mount adapter is going to be, uh, they're gonna have a mount adapter which is for the EF. So there is gonna be a mount adapter for this. And I was wondering before whether they were gonna have an, uh, the EF mount on the camera, so it looks like they're not going to do that now. Um, and it's got a control ring mount EF. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not actually sure. But that that's the actual camera in itself. Uh, the lenses that were announced, now where did I see those? They were announced somewhere else and they were amazing. Let me just Google in here, um, new window. It might even be mentioned in Sony Mirror, uh, in the Canon uh, site because the lenses were amazing. Because I'd love to talk about those too, because they were pretty incredible. Um, let me see. I think it was Canon Watch. Let's have a look through here. Because the lenses were, they seem to be um, that they're gonna blow away the Canon, here we go. Um, I think they're the ones, are they? Yes. All right, so basically the Canon uh, lenses that are gonna be announced are the 24-105, that's a lens uh, kit that comes with it. There's, a, there's gonna be a Canon 35 1.8, uh, there's a 50 mil 1.2, and that sounds amazing. I, I would love as a Sony shooter to be able to have a 1.2 lens with autofocus. Uh, there's a Canon 2870 uh, F2, I mean that is insane, having a 28 to 70 F2. Uh, 24105 f4, um, there's a 32mm f1.4, 400mm 2.8, and a 600mm f4. But the, the ones that really interest me on here is, is this Canon, uh, the 50 1.2, and the 28 to 70 f2 uh, lens is, is just nuts. So it seems to me that they're definitely a step up on what Nikon have announced with their lenses uh, right from the get-go, which is a great thing for you guys. And clearly, well, we have to wait and see, but I, I would think um, there's no reason why the EF lenses won't work just as good because they work fantastic on Sony with an adapter. The only area where they do fall down a little bit is if you're dealing with tracking or video tracking. Um, but if you're dealing with stills, they're amazing. But I'm sure because uh, Canon haven't had to sort of reverse engineer this from right from the beginning, that their EF lenses will probably work wonderfully on this. So you really are in a win-win sort of situation. And I'm really a bit jealous um, of what you guys are going to get. Um, let me just come back. Where are we? Uh, I've got to find that page again now. I think I've lost it. Let me bring it back again. Uh, because I wanna show you the photos of the actual um, images. So let me come back to here, uh, drag this back up. Oops, I'll take it there. All right, so let's look at the actual images themselves. Oh, they're saying down there actually. So this I think is a different one. Um, now they're saying in here that we've got at least three lenses coming, which is the 32 1.4, the uh, 400 2.8 and the uh, 600 f4. But looking at that other thing, they're talking about those 1.2 lenses. Um, let me go back. I just want to find the actual images. I had it before and I closed it when I did it with you guys. Now I can't find them. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. All right, lovely. All right, so here they are. Right, so let's have a look at them anyway. Um, so this, let me just move this so I can bring it up. Uh, looks like it's quite a nice uh, mount. Um, and I noticed on the top part to, to this that uh, it has got a little EVF screen up the top there, a little LCD screen, which is nice. Um, it looks like it's got the dual control, so it seems to be that it, it has the dual controls, which is nice as well. And you can see here that it's got the flip screen uh, down here, that this is your articulating screen. So you can see that it's got that there, which is unbelievable. 
This may be uh, the best vlogging camera that's actually available looking at, at this as the specs now. It just depends whether it's got the dual card slots, but if you're only vlogging for yourself, it may not matter so much, but I, I love that idea. So it seems to have everything that you actually need there. Um, this is the battery grip, obviously. And I noticed if you look at the side, this is the actual uh, little LCD on the top, which looks quite detailed. Uh, if you're looking at the side, the battery grip is really quite rounded. So I think it's gonna be very nice to hold on to. Um, it seems like it's, it's a lovely design in that respect, so the ergonomics might be really quite nice. Uh, all the dials seem to be in, in a good position. You can tell the size here from, from obviously the other uh, Canon camera there. Um, and then there's just some pictures of lenses here, which is the 35mm uh, there. Uh, that's the 28 to 70. Um, that one there is the 24 to 105, and is that one the 50mm as well? So looking at the actual specs though, and looking at the camera, with things like um, the articulating screen, uh, with those lenses that are actually announced, it's gonna do 4K. We still don't know yet how that 4K is gonna be, but I know having the dual pixel AF, this is gonna work fantastically if you wanna track yourself for doing uh, vlogging and things like that. Um, and, and it's really it looks to me like it's going to be a great announcement We still have to wait to see if it has things like dual card slots We don't know that yet whether it's going to have uh, dual card slots, so we still have to wait on that um, The touch screen probably on this will work very well I'd expect it to if it's anything like what the mark uh, Canon mark uh, 5 is uh, It'll be fantastic or mark 4 I should say it'll be fantastic. I've used that myself and I really liked it um, so that's going to be a great feature too. Like I said to you, this may be something that could be the, the best vlogging camera out there. And it might be a camera that I actually seriously consider buying for, for doing my YouTube work. Um, and obviously the lenses look really good as well. So what I want to do is I want to open it up to you guys to have a little chat about this, to see what you have to say. Um, because I'm curious too what you guys think about it. Um, I think the, the, the one thing is that... Um, Sony now, I really hope that this is a success and I, I hope this camera has everything basically that, um, you know, that Nikon left off in the fact of the dual card slots. I'm not sure it will, but if it does have that, this is really going to push Sony. Uh, if the battery life is good as well, uh, it will really push companies like Sony and that, that's going to be the interesting thing uh, and I think it'll be great for you guys. And like I've said, competition is great and I really hope this is a success. Um, so everyone early on is just saying hello. Um, let me just go down until people start commenting. Uh, I think this is how you pronounce it. Maher says, uh, these new Canon full frame specs look good, but no mention of IBIS. Yeah, that's true too, actually. That, that is something that they haven't mentioned. Uh, the, and there's also no mention of IAF either. So it's gonna be interesting to see whether it does have IBIS, whether it has IAF. Um, in the camera as well. And it also looks like one card slot. I don't think you can tell, because there's no side picture, is there? I'm just having a look through here. It may only have one, but they could be side by side, those cards. So you can't tell yet uh, whether that's gonna have um, just one card slot. No joystick. That, look, one no joystick doesn't bother me at all. I, I don't even use the Sonys. I mean, I have on the Sonys uh, the joystick obviously there. Now this is a personal thing, but I use the touch screen. So if this has a really good touch screen, it wouldn't bother me at all that there's no joystick on the back of that camera, as long as that touch screen is completely usable and I expect it to be. Um, but let me know whether you think that is an issue or not. Um, what else have we got? Specs 120 frames per second. Well, we still don't know yet. All they've said is 140, uh, 4K. So we don't know yet. And they also haven't said about the specs of the 1080p yet. So we don't know that uh, either yet. Um, what about the out and HDMI? Well, that's another thing we don't know yet. That's one thing where the Canon really did do a good job with, give, uh, sorry, the Nikon did a really good job with giving 10 bit um, 422 out but remember it's only uh, to an external recorder um, so they haven't said yet on this Canon whether that's going to give 10-bit uh, 422 or whether it's just going to be 8-bit uh, they may not even give the 10-bit out we have to wait and see these are things that we don't know um, I know EV6 uh, minus 6 AF is, is ridiculous um, it, it is seriously ridiculous it's some voodoo that they're actually doing Carl said 
No IBIS. I'm guessing due to the lightweight of the camera and slightly larger body side and no mention on the list. Well, we still have to wait yet, Carl. It could be things that may be holding something back. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Um, this will smoke Sony and Nikon's. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think it's certainly going to challenge Nikon's camera, though, that's for sure. Um, like said, uh, trying to chat up on the back catalogue and bang, you're live. <laughs> um, Rid said, they surely have IBIS included. That must uh, be to compete on the market. Well, I'll be surprised. Look, if they don't add IBIS, I will be surprised. And I hadn't thought about that until you mentioned that. But that's something that I'd, I'd be surprised if they never had IBIS at all. Um, Jerome said, uh, I think the real competition in the mirrorless world starts when Canon releases his full frame mirrorless, but I know Sony could have a better counter to all of this. Well, we have to wait and see. That could be why Sony's holding back. Um, no joystick, one card slot, IBIS, and what is the 4K codec? Well, that's what we still have to wait uh, and see what they are in that respect. I'm only talking about the specs that were listed there uh, look good, but we do have to wait for the official release, obviously. They're not going to give everything out straight away. Um... Johan said, what do you think about the 1080p 120 uh, and 4K 60 frames per second dual card slot? Well, like I said, they haven't listed that yet, uh, Jahan. I'm not, I don't know what the 1080p uh, resolution is going to be or the 4K. I don't think it will be 60. You never know, it might be. Um, I think it's probably more than likely going to be 30, though, but we have to wait and see. Uh, artic articulating screen is going to be a bread swinger. Uh, they're going to sell a bucket load of these if they put the articulating screen on that which does look like they are going to do it. Um, Gerard said, I would like to know if there is a dual slot. Yeah, we're still waiting on that. Um, the card looks a bit slim, uh, hard to fit two cards into the body. Well, they, they could fit two cards in there if it's SD cards. Um, Kenneth said, agreed, the lenses are interesting. The, the lenses look amazing and... and uh, as you probably all know, Canon probably do make the best lenses out there. So that so that is one amazing thing, and I would expect those lenses to be really amazing. Um, I think they've definitely kicked Nikon in the lens department for the release of this. Um, rumors say nineteen hundred dollars. Yep. So it's directly going to compete with the A seven three and the um, Z six or the Z six. I should say. You've got to say Z, don't you? Um, can you uh, extend this show so I can get out of doing gardening? <laughs> That's funny. Great day in Perth. Um, PV Log said 1900 seems cheap. Well, I do have to compete with uh, A7, A7 Mark III. Um, Helmut said if you have uh, to use an adapter, I can also switch to Sony. And I'm hoping, I mean, I'm a Sony shooter. I'm hoping that they give an adapter for these Canon lenses on the Sony mount because I'd love to use those lenses. Uh, I really would. Um, what else have we got? Um... Gary said if, if true, then this, I think this spells the end of for Nikon. Uh, Nikon, it will be Sony and Canon who dominate the cam Canon, uh, camera industry. Uh, and that is going to be a really interesting um, discussion about how Nikon challenged this. If Canon produce a really good camera here right from the start, I think Nikon is going to be in trouble. And I, I do actually think that because it was a little bit disappointing, their, their camera announcement. Look, there's some good features about that camera. Uh, the, obviously, the 10-bit 422 is an amazing feature. Um, but there's, there's reports from different YouTubers out there that sometimes the focusing is not that good. Uh, things like that, which we still have to wait. Now, we don't know how the, the Canon is going to go, but we can only judge the Canon by what their previous can, uh, cameras were like, uh, particularly with autofocus and video. Uh, really, they were up the top if you're talking about video focus. Yes, the new Sony cameras are probably almost comparable, but the, the Canon really have always been up there. So I would expect it to possibly be even even better than what's announced now. So that's going to be a really interesting thing. It looks like it's a new sensor that's on this camera, so that's also another thing that we have to wait and see. 30 megapixel is, is a good sort of size that you can use. I love 24, but also 30 megapixel as well is not too large, so that's also a really good thing. Uh, the articulating screen, I mean, I can't understand Sony why Sony haven't given us that articulating screen. So that, that's a real downer by Sony, and I am hope they see this 
and you know they need to kick up the backside because we've been asking for that for so long and the first mirrorless that Canon bring out they're producing a uh, uh, fully articulating screen so good on Canon I'm, I'm really happy for you Canon shooters um, and I, I really mean that and I honestly hope this camera is fantastic because I'd love the competition um, Ritz said, uh, and with three adapters and uh, the old good and valuable glass can be used. And like I said to you, I also think that because they haven't had to reverse engineer this adapter, that it's going to be, it'll work fantastic because the Canon lenses work fantastic on Sony. So you would expect the Canon lenses to work brilliantly on this adapter, on this camera, because they've built it from the ground up. So I would be really surprised if this doesn't work fantastic right from the get go. And uh, you know, and I do think that will happen. The, even the Nikon apparently works really well um, with their F mount, so I would expect the Canon to work really good as well. Um, what else have we got? Mer said, when you look at the image of the back of the camera, you can see there is no joystick, and the card slot is the same as the uh, 7080D, only one card slot. Uh, come on. Yeah, and that's what we've got to wait and see, though. I hope it has two card slots. Um, this could still be a camera though, like I said, for me personally, it would interest me as a vlogging camera particularly. Um, we did have big discussions about this, about dual card slots, and you can follow my other videos about that, and I, I as a professional photographer, I'm not prepared to use single card slots uh, for professional work because I had a card corrupt, and I was only saved by having a second card slot, but I'm not going to go in, into all that again. Uh, but we do have to wait and see about where they're pricing uh, this camera and where it sort of sits uh, in that marketplace. Um, so Nikon was right when they tell Fuji that full frame is the future. Um, Panasonic also have too, and I might discuss that in another video tomorrow. I know it, it's interesting times in mirrors at the moment, that's for, that's for sure. Um, if Panasonic comes with full frame mirrors, it will be insane. Well, it looks like they're going to. Uh, what's the red ring? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, on the lenses, that must be probably to do with that lens. When you're talking about the, um, here, you're talking about this thing, it's just going to probably state that that's for that uh, R mount. I'd say that's all that's going to be. Um, what else? Uh... PVLog said, one thing that Sony has done right is targeting the consumer hard, yep, and they have, and I'm, I'm hoping that, like I said, if this camera had the two card slots, it would be insane, basically. I, I think it really would be insane. Um, do you think it'll have 120 frames per second? I, I Probably. I think it will have 1080, 120, and I think it'll be uh, 30, 4K 30p. That's my guess at this stage but we have to wait and see. We also don't know what Kodaks and things like that this is gonna have either, so we do have to wait for that. Remember, also there's another reason why I think that Nikon have done the wrong thing, because the, the N-Log that they've released, which is the, the log version for their camera, you, you can only use that if you're actually going to an external monitor, and that, that's, a, that's not a good thing to do. So I'm hoping that Canon haven't stopped using um, the log profiles uh, internal because I think that was a real downer forcing you to to use a, a camera and then stick a monitor or something like that on top of it so you can use log it is a real downer and I'm, I'm not quite certain why they did that so I hope Canon don't do that um, the Canon M5 used a touchscreen to move focus point, so I think they replaced the joystick. Yeah, like I said, that replacing the joystick for me is 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 not an issue because I don't use it. I don't even use it on my Sony cameras. I know others do, but I don't. I'm quite comfortable using a good touchscreen, and the Sonys aren't good touchscreens. So if Canon produce a good touchscreen, which I expect them to, like I had when I had the GH5, uh, it was amazing, you know. And that's all you need. A really good touchscreen is all you need. Um, EF adapter that accepts filters is also a great feature. Oh, so it'll, it'll accept, it'll accept uh, NDs, will it? That, well, that's, that's a good thing. I didn't even know about that. So, um, where are we? I hate that. It jumps sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Nick, I must be sweating now. Um, what else? Uh, will it support EF lenses? I think with an adapter, distant light productions. That's what they're saying. So, um, 
Yeah, also, Mick said, my nose changes my AF point on my M50. Well, I get the same thing on my cameras too, on the Sonys, uh, Mick. And I, all I do is I have it as a quick a button and I can disable it. So if I am using the EVF and I don't want to go through that, I can just do that. Um, these cannons excite me, lenses excite me, and I don't blame you. I think they look really good, actually. Um, only one body coming out. Yes, that's true at this stage. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing at this comment. Starting to count the videos why I switched back to Canon from Sony. I love it. <laughs> oh, um, we'll be interested in this camera. Brings back a lot of the Canon shooters back from Sony. If they still have a lot of Canon lenses after switching from Canon to Sony, well, it could do, you know. I mean, if if Canon do amazing uh, releases, there is a lot of Sony shooters out there that do use Canon lenses. Um, so it could do that. You don't know. I mean, we're in interesting times. Um, oh, so Milk said, I don't have the M50, but I think... Uh, you should be able to do the same with the M5. You should be able to select a region which is part of the LCD. And you can do that on these too. I think you can select half, uh, stuff like that, so you can sort of move it away from your nose too if you uh, do that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Distant Light Production said 4K 60p will destroy Sony future sales. Uh, that probably would hurt Sony. Um, but I don't think it'll happen though. I think it'll be 4K 30. Um, Nineteen hundred dollars and the same level as the 6D2, no dual card slot. And you, most of you Canon shooters would know more about that probably than what um, you know I would know. Uh, I was about to jump uh, Canon to Sony. We'll hold off now. And this is the thing I've been telling people for a while. People are saying, should I jump or should I buy a new camera? And I've said no. Just wait and see what these other people uh, announce. Wait for Nikon, wait for Canon, wait for Sony, because you should basically wait. Either way, when these announcements come out, all the older cameras, the older models are going to drop in prices. So uh, we all win from this. Uh, that's why I think it's a great thing. I, I really do. Um, and like I said, I've said all along to people, and, and it's it's interesting. I might think a little bit differently than some YouTubers. I don't know, but I'm happy for competition. I'm happy that Canon are doing this and Nikon are doing this, and I really am happy for Canon users that may be watching this now. I, I would love you guys to get a really great release. Um, David Johnson said, hopefully Canon use their dual pixel autofocus in 4K video. I'm sure they will. I don't think it'll be crippled like the um, uh, the 50, uh, is it the 50M? I think that was it, wasn't it? I don't think they'll cripple this camera. I would be very surprised if they did. Uh, I think the fully articulating screen is a patent issue. It must be costly patent troll since Fujifilm spe still spent R&D money on the articulating screen. You may be right. There, there must be a reason why Sony is just not giving that to us. I mean, they give us... Oh, I haven't got it here. They give us where it folds up forward, but not out like that. Um, oops. Chris said, um, there is no EF to R adapter listed from what I've read. It is the smaller M to R mount. Um, Milk said, I... I think the R mount lenses have a programmable aperture ring. Interesting. What type of cards? We don't know yet. I think looking at the site, it'll be SD cards, I would think. Uh, red ring means L series. Okay, thank you, uh, Promo Movies. Thank you for that. Um, now, that's interesting. Wixing said, I think the RF mount mean radio focus as Canon had a patent in the past about lens camera communicating using radio. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Haven't heard of that before. Um, Carl said, I heard there may be a joystick of sort, maybe fully electronic um, to the right of the ear cup on the back of the camera. Oh, okay. Let me just have go back to here. I, I just want to see if I can see anything on there that shows that. I can't see anything. You're talking about that little section there. Um, no, I don't know, perhaps. Um, Rid said, for vloggers, Canon for sure made the race with the articulating screen, pulling many users from Sony and Nikon. And, that, and that's the thing I've missed the most. Uh, Trev, and I agree with you, I'd love an articulating screen. That's why I said, if this is a great camera, I'd be tempted to buy it. 
Um, Gary said, the rumoured lenses look so much more appealing than Nikon's, which were crappy cheap looking. Let's see real world reviews versus Sony glass. Yeah, I can't wait to see that as well. Uh, Pixel Shift, they haven't mentioned that. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, the only one at the moment that has that is uh, um, in mirrorless I'm talking about is actually Sony. Uh, Ali said, I, I expect Canon to hold back some of those pro features like dual card slots. They may, and that's what we've still got to wait. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what actually happens. DMAX says, hello. Um, I really appreciate a thumbs up too, guys. If you could give me one, I really would appreciate that. It does make a difference uh, to my channel. Um, Sub uh, said, I switched to Fuji due to the neglect of APS-C lenses by Sony. Full frame glass is just too expensive and bulky for the amateur. Now remember the thing too is that Canon glass has tended to be reasonably uh, inexpensive. So this is one good thing about um, having a, a good release from Canon is the lenses are actually reasonably um, inexpensive, particularly compared to Sony. Um, I, I would adore a couple of Canon lenses. I've always really admired the, the Canon 85 1.2 and I've always wished Sony had something like that. I have the 85 1.8 but I would adore to get something like the 85 1.2 and having the 50 1.2 on this too is really interesting uh, in lenses as well. Um, then no, uh, I haven't heard yet whether the 4K is cropped. Hopefully they're not penalizing that too much and cropping it in too much. We, these are the things that we have to wait and see when the camera's announced. Um, um, Jahan said, uh, Ibis, good battery life, dual card slot, no crop 4K will bring a bang for Canon. I know, look, this is the interesting thing. This is what I can't understand because I know these suppliers like Nikon and Canon may want to protect their digital SLR line. But if you are a marketing person, surely wouldn't you think that I'm going to produce the best mirrorless that I can possibly uh, produce? Now, if Canon brought out a uh, camera like this, for instance, that shot 4K60, it had dual card slots, what could touch it? If, I mean, Obviously, Sony may still be better in dynamic range. We haven't seen yet how this sensor will be um, and things like that, that Sony may still be better. But the, this would sell like absolute hotcakes. So if you were dealing with a, a camera like that, it wouldn't matter if they lost sales of their digital SLRs because they'd sell this by the truck and truck loads. They probably couldn't manufacture enough of these cameras. So I'm not quite certain what they're thinking when they hold things back. And I, I really don't understand that. Um, Elric said, I heard Canon owns a patent for articulating screens on cameras. So Sony has to pay Canon. Okay, and that could be the reason. Um, oops. Uh, Elric said, um, Peter said, Canon just catched up with Sony, but Sony will come with a new A7R4. Look, we still haven't seen what Sony have got to announce yet for their A7S3. I mean, the, Sony will answer this, I, I'm sure. But it's like I've said, that competition is great for everyone. Uh, and new Canon shooters particularly have needed a, a camera like this. And I'm so happy for you that th this has been announced. And it looks like it's going to be a, a good camera for you guys. Um, but clearly Sony will also answer it. Like I've also said to you, uh, you don't know yet what the dynamic range is going to be like on this camera. There's things like that yet that we have to see. Obviously Sony has a IAF, which I can tell you as a Sony shooter, I would never want to be without uh, being a portrait photographer because that is just outstanding. There's no mention yet whether that is in here either. Um, but we have to wait and see. Canon may come out with their own version of that. So we do have to wait and see uh, what's announced with it. Um, but I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm happy for Canon that they've done this. I really do want it to be a good release. Um, <laughs> I notice here, clever Jar Jar, I think it is, that 51.2 may um, get me to switch. And you're so lucky, guys. Canon, you Canon users, uh, it's so lucky. 51.2, I would adore that. Um, 
Competition is good for the consumer. I exactly agree with you, Kenneth. It's the best thing ever. And as photographers, you should all not be hoping a company fails. You really should all be hoping that these companies succeed. Uh, because if if companies succeeded, if Canon and, and Nikon fail to produce anything good, then there's no reason why Sony would produce anything good. If Sony didn't produce anything good, there's no reason why Canon would have to produce anything good. So competition is a, a really great thing for all of us. Um, Spiral said, card slot door looks uh, small. Maybe the card slots are uh, side by side. Well, they could be. We just don't know yet, Spiral. It might be, it might be a single card slot. Um, hope the buttons are customizable like Sony. Photo for Max said, uh, time to get a 35 1.8 Sony, otherwise the Canon looks great. Spiral said, card slot door looks small, maybe the card slots are side by side. And that's what I'm thinking, that's possibly the only way they would fit in, if, they, if it is dual card slots. Um, Photo for Max said, old Canon glass were reasonably priced. Yeah, they are, and that's one great thing about the Canon lens and also uh, Nikon lenses, Canon particularly, uh, have do have reasonably priced um, lenses. And I do think overall they probably do make the best lenses that are out there. Um, Carl said, if Canon uh, starts to hold features back, it will kill this Canon. Hopefully they don't. I mean, we're still going out with uh, rumours at this stage of what's uh, going to be announced. Um, the body needs a good grip. Well, it seems to. Looking at that image, when you look at these images here, the body looks like, which one was it? It was, um, I can't find it now. Let me just go back. I think it was at the, yeah, it was near the end. Looking at the grip, it looks like it's got a really nice solid grip. Uh, not that one here. You can see that here it, it looks like it's got a very good grip for your hand to hold on to. So I don't think holding on to this is going to be an issue at all. It, it actually looks really nice. Um... Panasonic will announce a full frame mirrorless two. Yes, I've heard that's going to actually happen. Oh, and that's true. Soso said Sony has an articulating screen. That's the A992. Exactly, and I forgot about that. Um, I hope they don't. Uh, Pro Movie said uh, they hold back to protect the EOS cinema line. Well, I hope they need to get over that. Um, what else have we got? Um, Spiral said, uh, Canon 70 to 200, 2.8 is a gem. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, from what I've seen, even Tony Northrup discussed that. He said that was the best 70 to 200 mar uh, lens in the marketplace. Um, Canon has IAF on the M50, I think. Interesting. Let me know, guys, if, if it does have IAF on the uh, M50. I'd be curious to know. Um, Jahan said, wait till Sony declares the A7S III, and I'm sure that's going to be an amazing camera. I can't wait for that myself. Um, Bill said, switch from the 70D to the A7 III. The optimism reminds me of everything with the ADD and the, um, and the 6D II. Whether this release works depends on Kodaks. Yeah, and I agree with you. It does depend on things like Kodaks, Ibis 4K. They're still things that we need to wait uh, on yet to see how they actually are. Uh, the, the crop, dynamic range, and video quality. GPS, we don't know. It's not mentioned, so I'd say it probably hasn't got... Uh, GPS. Mark said, don't forget that the prosumer is the main market and the manufacturers always have to walk the line between features and cost. And the thing is, Mark, this is what I'm saying to you. I would probably buy this camera uh, as a vlogging camera myself for my YouTube business, I, without doubt, because Sony have nothing like this with an articulating screen. Uh, so if that's the case, I would probably buy this uh, in a heartbeat because I'd love to have that aspect of doing video and it really does interest me and, and I think it's a really interesting uh, I can't wait to see what the specs are on this camera because it really is exciting that's the first one I've seen that's exciting in the fact of it's got things that uh, I don't like uh, I would love to have in Sony and plus also the really amazing lens announcements so it really is interesting um, oops where did we go to? Hi Manny, how are you? Uh, the lenses are most intriguing. No IBIS and one card slot is a deal breaker. Um, it wouldn't bother me particularly for YouTube uh, or for vlogging, Manny. 
Um, but yeah, it would be disappointing for shooters out there if there's no IBIS on there. And obviously if there's one card slot, like I've already mentioned, uh, I wouldn't be using it for a business type camera, that's for sure. Um, but I still think this will sell like hotcakes. I, I really do. Um, Spiral said, hope dynamic range uh, as good as Nikon or Sony. That's still got to be determined. We've still got to wait and see that, but it looks like it's a new sensor. Um, what else have we got? Manny also said, dual pixel AF in 4K would be great. Yeah, and I think we'll get that on that. They've held back on the M50. Uh, but I think you'll find that we'll probably get the 4K dual pixel autofocus in this. And this is why I'm saying to you, it's a really interesting camera for me for doing vlogging. Um, I really am interested in this. Uh, really interested in this. Um, is it a flip out screen? Yes, it is. It's a fully articulating screen. Uh, Mark said, morning, Dave. Used the Z7 yesterday. Absolutely loved it. As a hybrid shooter, EVF and screen, uh, very nice quality. Focus peaking is a joy to use. Thanks for sharing that, Mark. Um, David said hi from Perth, looking forward to the full specs. Remember, we're going to know because I think what is it only in a matter of days now. So we're going to know and I'll, I'll do another video about this uh, when this is fully announced. Uh, cheers, I'm having my Milo. Um, photo for Max said 4K will probably be cropped. Uh, but this is a great contender nevertheless. Yep, it is. I hope it's not too cropped. I hope it's not something like a, a, a two times crop or something like that. Um, you know, if it's a 1.3 or something like that, you could live with it. Um, and I'm hoping the Kodak also is good too, that they haven't held back on that Kodak as well. Um, so it, it's it's interesting overall. Um, Somerville Photography said, woohoo, caught Mr. Rose alive. <laughs> Uh, it's good. I like popping in later with you guys because I get a totally different audience than I do uh, with my normal uh, videos. So it's great um, to see as well. Oh, the A7 III link for BNH is broken. I'll have to change it, Maxim. Um, I'll change that uh, in a minute. I'll redo it uh, and put a new one in there. Um, but like I've said to you overall, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to spend all night here, but uh, I think overall looking at the specs, I did a brief video about this today, but I was at uh, VidCon. Um, so I only could put a, like a, a, a screen grab and I, and I thought I'll get home tonight and I'll discuss it with you all. Um, I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, from what I've seen, I am more excited about this than I am with the Nikon announcement, particularly because of the, like I've said, the lenses and also that articulating screen. And I know that the dual pixel AF is just wonderful to use. And that's one thing why I am fairly excited about this camera and maybe something that I get uh, in my arsenal to do my job as, as basically a YouTuber and videographer um, because it, it will be great, I would think, in that respect. Um, now, don't forget to, I will in the coming days talk about, I might do it tomorrow, talk about the Panasonic uh, release because that's also interesting. And, and as a uh, an XGH5 user, I can talk to you about that as well. Uh, so I'll give you my sort of opinion about where that's going to go. But I think overall... I really believe that we are in the most amazing time as mirrorless photographers or any photographers at the moment because the gear that's going to come out in the next 12 months or whatever is going to change everything. And I just, it's so exciting. I, I really can't wait. And I do love gear. And this is the thing I, it's not just Sony that I love, I, I love any gear. And I'm, at the end of the day, I'm actually a photographer and I'm an artist first. And so really, it never matters what type of gear you use, it's, it's about the art that's actually there. And this is why I've always been open to, to, like I said, I'd love to have a look at that camera. And I was hoping the Nikon was going to be good because I may have even um, got one of those, but I was a little bit disappointed with the Nikon, so I won't be moving and buying one of those. I'm not going to switch, um, but I, I still love that technology. Like I said, I shot with the GH5 for a while. Um, let me just see if there's any last few questions before we log off for the night. Um, did you ever break an SD card? Um, I, I had a, 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 to explain that, I have put some videos about that. Um, a, as most people know that follow me, I am a full-time photographer. Um, and I had a paid shoot not long ago, which is a very high um, profit um, job for me. Uh, and it's worth a lot of money, and I had a corruption of that card uh, during the shoot. 
The problem was that you couldn't see the corruption on the card itself when you were looking through the EVF or the viewfinder. It only showed the corruption when I got home and, and viewed it in Lightroom. I was only saved by the fact that I had the dual card slot uh, in the A9. And that saved me because I could use the JPEGs and I... I I was I was through, but until that stage, I swore that I, I I used to basically say that Sony never had an issue having one card slot. I'd never had a card slot that failed, and I was always protecting Sony when they were being slammed about that. That changed the whole way of thinking, and I thought I'm never going to get into that situation again because having to tell a bride that you know that her images were uh, no good, that I'd missed the first kiss because of a card corruption. Um, I'm just not prepared to do it. Now you may be, and that's totally up to you, and I can understand if you want to do that, but for me, the client has to come first, and therefore I'm only ever gonna use on a paid job uh, a dual card slot system, which gives me that redundancy, and, and that's just the way that I'm shooting now. So if this didn't have the dual card slots, I would not use it in a professional job, that's me, others, you, you may say you're fine with it, and that's fine, that's up to you. I wouldn't, but I would love something like this to shoot as a, um, like I said, a vlogging camera or something like that. I'd adore it, uh, particularly with those lenses that you've got. Um, let me just keep coming down just before we finish. Somerville Photography said... Um, I sell my Canon stuff apart from the 85 1.2, which I love. Yeah, I'd love that 85 1.2. Uh, it works amazing on the A7R 3 but I wouldn't hesitate to buy this camera. It looks great. Um, Lighteed said, I believe this time Canon will take aim at Sony's A7 III. Uh, it may not beat it all the specs, but uh, it should have some winning features. And I think that's all they have to do. They, they basically just have to get in the ballpark of that A7 III, which I adore. I love that A7 III. Um, Cam said, what do you think of Sony's game plan will be here going forward? I put up a, a video the other day about this and I said, I think Sony were holding back um, their A7S III and also the A6, A6000 or 7000, I should say. I believe they're holding back to see what Canon was going to announce. And I, I do honestly believe that. And I think you'll probably find once this has been announced and the specs are out, uh, then you'll hear fairly soon after that what the what Sony have got to do uh, with their A7S III. They've, they've been, definitely been holding that back for a reason. I think they've done that deliberately to see what is announced in with Canon and Nikon. So stay tuned, I suppose. Um, Tony said, Nikon may regret having gone first. Maybe, Tony. Um, What else have we got? Manny said 28 to 70 f2 lens uh, is what everyone should be excited about. I know, Manny, that, that some of these lenses are just incredible. What a great lens announcement that they're, they're talking about here. A 51.2, a, a 28 to 70 f2. I mean, what a fantastic lens announcement. I'm jealous as well. Uh, I really am jealous of these lenses. I'm hoping there's an adapter uh, for Sony that we can use these lenses. Isn't that funny that we're talking about now adapting their lenses over to Sony? Um, what else have we got? Chris said, this is the first, uh, this is Canon's first mirrorless camera. Their next mirrorless camera will be their version of the A7R three. Yes, perhaps. Uh, Helmut said, great job, David. Thank you so much, Helmut. Um, Mick said, did you try data recovery software? Well, the, I had a look at it, but the problem was it, it didn't destroy it. It was it had all like um, corruptions going all through the actual image. So data recovery software wouldn't have fixed that. It, it was actually corruptions in the file. Uh, so yeah, so it wouldn't have worked. Um, Kenneth said, thank you for sharing, David. Uh, keep being awesome. Thank you so much. Um, what else have we got? Manny said it's like having three to four primes in one lens. I know, Manny. How lucky are they? Oh, I, I really hope that... Uh, this is why I'm saying I'm tempted to get one. Um, that's nice, Carl. Just got a call from Sony. He's just put an announcement there. Congratulations. Um, Sarah Watt said, should I buy uh, Nikon mirrorless or Sony? Uh, well, if you're talking about Nikon mirrorless or Sony, I'll be getting the A7 III, definitely, I, I, in a heartbeat. 
uh, definitely wouldn't be buying that. Wait and see, if you're not in the marketplace at all, just wait and see what this Canon has before you make a decision. Uh, Kimo said, do you, David, do you think the Canon EOS R will have a dual card slot? We don't know. I hope it does. Most people here are saying they think it won't. Um, <laughs> Michael said, I've heard more cameras fail than cards uh, on shoots. Yeah, and you're right, Michael, but the problem is if it was a wedding and you miss, I just couldn't face the bride. I, I, I just couldn't do it. Uh, but like I said, that's me. Uh, has said, I hope they don't cripple the video capabilities. I agree with you. I hope they don't do that as well. They should have gone with the existing EFM mount now. Um, they have to manage three mounts. I know, but I suppose at least they've uh, brought out fantastic lenses, though. That's for sure. Um, you know, said cards never fail until it actually happens to you. And, and this is right. And, and that's the way I'm thinking. And I was honest with all of the people that I discussed this with, saying that I protected Sony by saying I've never had a card fail and I never had. Uh, and then it happened to me and it changed my thinking completely. I didn't know Sony <laughs> made Milo. <laughs> That's because I'm drinking it in a Sony cup. I love it. Um, Spiral said, uh, no pre-orders in India. We can go and buy when it launches here. I'm going to buy the, Z, uh, the Z6 and the uh, D750 uh, as along with it. Um, what else have we got? I'm just thinking, hi Panda, how are you? Good to see you in here. David said, looks to me from the co uh, codes that the adapters have an ND filter or polarizing filter built in. Oh, I don't, that's amazing. Look, if that's the case as well, uh, kicking goals. I mean, <laughs> oh, I'd love an internal ND. You can buy an adapter for that. Uh, one of them has that. I can't remember which one it is on Sony. Uh, but to have the internal NDs and polarizing filter built into the adapters would be amazing. Uh, how good would that be? Um, Uno says 28 to 70 f2 must be huge yes it must be but boy what a lens um, Tony said I've had a sand disc fail recently cards do fail and that's right they do uh, given enough time they all fail and it's like it's like Russian roulette isn't it you just never know that's the problem um, what else is it did you end up getting the Tamron 28 to 75 no Tim it's still not available in the shop yet here I'm waiting for it to actually be available in the shops. Um, Gilbert said, hi, hi Gilbert, how are you? And everyone's so glad to actually catch a live show. Uh, the battery door looks small, so probably only one card. Yeah, that's what most people are in here are saying. Um, Has says, indeed, that 1.2 Prime and the fast F2 zoom will probably cost a fortune. Yes, they may, but you pay for what you get. You would expect to pay uh, reasonable money for an f1.2 or an f2 zoom like that, and I certainly would pay for it. Um, like I said, I'm just totally jealous of you Canon shooters. I really am. Just the lenses alone are exciting me looking at that. So uh, that really is interesting me, uh, that's for sure. How long have we been going? Nearly an hour. Um, does your Sony cup have David is great? <laughs> No, it doesn't. All right, guys, uh, I'm popping off. Thank you so much um, for joining in. I'm, I'm so happy. Please, if you can, give me a thumbs up. And I really would love you, uh, if you can, to subscribe to my channel. That means everything to me. Uh, like I said, this is to me is like a, a, a guy talking to his mates. And I want that to be how this is. Everyone talks about how long these always go for. But it's like I said yesterday in the live chat that... Um, you know, that it's basically like me sitting around on a table with a group of guys or girls that I love talking to. And that's, that's how I want these to be. I don't want this to be a fight with against Canon, Sony, Nikon or anything else. Uh, you know, and as the future comes along, um, I'm probably, because there's so much now at the moment, I've only ever been able to talk about basically uh, Sony in full frame mirrorless. But as these other cameras start to come out, you know, I will be doing more and more talking about the Canon and Nikon and things like that and Sony and, and Panasonic. Um, so, you know, I'd love you to join me on my um, uh, travels, basically. And like I said, talk around like a whole bunch of mates. Um, that's about it. All right, guys, that's all for now. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. So I might talk about the um, Panasonic uh, the next time that we actually go because I'd love you to do that as well. Uh, thanks so much for the support, everyone. Really appreciate it. Have a great evening.